Okay, so let's see how these translation and shift kind of things actually work in practice when you're actually looking at an equation and want to see what the corresponding graph looks like. Now, I want to start with a very simple example. Let's start with the good old-fashioned parabola. This is the parabola f of x equals x squared. Now what I want to do is consider the shifts, or sometimes called translations of these, in various directions. So the first one is going to be what I'm going to call g of x. I want to graph this. And g of x equals x squared plus 1. Well, when I see a plus 1 that's added to the function, what that means is I'm going to be rising the y values. Changing y's mean go up or go down. And a plus 1 means I'm going to go positively up one unit. So in fact, the graph of g of x is exactly the same as f of x, although the only difference is every y value, which is a height value, is going to be increased by 1. So all I take, do is take this curve and just literally increase it by 1. And that's now the function of g of x. So by adding 1 at the very end, I just rise the, raise the function up one unit. So it's the exact same function as before, but raised up one unit. So if you know the graph of that, you immediately know the graph of that. Neat. OK, let's return back to f of x and take a look at another function, which I call h of x. h of x is x squared minus 3. So what's the graph of that look like? Well, again, I'm just changing the y values. I'm taking the function and subtracting 3 from all the y values. So that's going to be a, a diminution of the y values by 3 units. So I just take my standard parabola and move it down 1, 2, 3 units. And so now the parabola looks like this. This is the graph of h, which is x squared minus 3. And notice that if you just know the graph of x squared, you can immediately find this graph by shifting down, the power of seeing the shift here. OK, let's now return once again to the standard parabola and look at a more exotic function. This is j of x, which is the quantity x plus 2 all squared. Now notice I'm not adding on something to the, to the y values. I'm sort of changing the x value now from the, just the regular x squared. So what effect is this going to have? Well, let's think about it and see what's going to happen to the plus 2. When I see x's that are being added or subtracted by a constant, that's going to be a, a horizontal shift of some kind. Let's figure out what kind it is. Well, let's see. At 0, this curve, the f of x function equals x squared, is 0. What value for x now will make this thing 0? So if I were to set that equal to 0, what's the x value where y is 0? Well, if I set that equal to 0, I see that x would have to be negative 2. So that means at this point, the height of 0 is now going to take place when x equals negative 2. So it seems like I've got to take that point and shift it way over here. So in fact, I've got to shift, now watch this, 2 units to the left. And everything else will follow suit. Now, why is that? Well, the reason being that if I have just x squared equals that parabola, if I add something to the x's, you may think, oh, gee, I should shift this way. But that's actually wrong, because if I want to add something to the x's, that means that I would get these bigger values for smaller values of x. So I actually have to shift the two units this way. Because notice, for example, when I plug in 0 now, this says I should be getting 4, and what does this say? If I plug in 0 here, I see 0 plus 2 squared, which is 4. So in fact, by shifting this way, the higher wings of the parabola starts to move over to smaller values. Here I had to wait all the way to 2 to get to 4. Now I only have to wait to 0 to get to 4. So the bottom line is, when you see an x plus something, you shift to the left. Now, what about when you see an x minus something? What's your guess? Shift to the right is absolutely correct k of x equals x minus 1 all squared. That's a shifting of the x value. And since it's x minus 1, that means instead of 0, 0, I'm going to have 0, I'm going to have um, 1, 0. If I put in 1 here, I get 0. So I shift 1 unit over this way. So when I see a minus sign with respect to the x, I shift always to the right. This is a classic, classic algebra mistake. In fact, this is al my classic algebra mistake number 8. Number eight, classic mistake out of my top 10 list. This is the shifting function mistake. And always remember, add to y, go high. Add to x, go west. So if you add something to x, you should go west. And therefore, if you subtract something from x, you should go east. Good way of remembering this. Or you could just think about it in terms of what's happening. I'm taking all the, 
all the x values, I'm decreasing them by 1. So in this case, everything has to go over this way to compensate for the fact that the x values are getting smaller. So if you take x minus something and plug that into the value, then you're going to shift this way. If you take x plus something and plug it into the function for x, you're going to be shifting to the left. And then, of course, the y's are easy. If you add something to the y, it goes up. Subtract, it goes down. With the x's, it's the opposite direction, as you may think. So remember, classic mistake number eight, because everyone makes it. So please don't make this mistake. It's a shifting mistake. And remember my little sl slogan, add to y, go high, add to x, go west. Try these on your own.